Hi, I'm Olivia aka Biblioghoul and today I was going to talk about all of the books I read in February. I'm a little behind with these so I'm hoping that I can get caught up and I did some vlogs from February that talked more in depth about these books so I'll try to focus on the ones that I didn't spend whole videos uh, talking about. So the first book I read, I buddy re read with Sean from the Storytime. It's called Mutual Aid, Building Solidarity During This Crisis and the Next. It's by Dean Spade, who I had read their book about policing in the past. I'm really glad I saw this book on Sean's channel because really I didn't know anything about mutual aid before this and I really enjoyed how this book detailed um, mutual aid work in social movements and really shed on the nonprofit industry and differentiated between the concept of charity and mutual aid and the end of the book was a lot of specific uh, questions and thoughts for doing mutual aid and uh, connecting mutual aid to larger issues and um, I think it would be a good book for people directly engaging in this work. A lot of reflection on leadership and communication um, and the best way to do this work. So I really enjoyed that. The next book is Beloved by Toni Morrison. Um, it was cool to have a few of the people I follow on booktube also reading this at the same time and see their takes. I know Elle from Elle Thinks had described this book as kind of a puzzle box where everything wasn't um, always apparent and took a lot of deeper thinking to think through. I thought this was a beautiful way to write about some of these traumatic, painful experiences by giving a little bit and giving raw reactions and letting the reader catch up. I'm so glad I read this book and I will never forget it. I'd like to read it another time, but reading this book was definitely a heavy experience and affected the rest of my reading month. I can't wait to read more Toni Morrison. I forgot to say that this book is about uh, the legacies of slavery and a woman who uh, killed her child with the threat of her child being enslaved and then the child comes back as a ghost. And you see them work through this painful moment. There are also other characters that are dealing with the effects of living through slavery. So this is just a fantastic book. Next book I read is The Belly of the Beast, The Politics of Anti-Fatness as Anti-Blackness by Deshaun Harrison. And this book does a really good job of linking and rooting discussion of anti-fatness in anti-blackness. This is a very intersectional book that brings in thoughts on anti-blackness, anti-fatness, as well as how this intersects with sexuality and gender identity and talks about these things in the context of prisons and policing and abolition. So although it was short, it definitely covered a lot and pointed me to further reading about fatness. Next I read Revolutionary Power, which is all about the power system and specifically focuses on places like Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and communities that are harmed by big factories related to energy and discusses all the downfalls of major corporations owning energy and not communities and how during natural disasters this is devastating and how all of these companies don't keep up with the energy and uh, what it would look like to move towards locally owned solar power. And this topic was completely new to me, so I appreciated that first look at it. Now the next book I'm excited to talk about because I didn't get to talk about it in a vlog and it was fantastic, a five star read for me. It's called So Many Beginnings, A Little Women Remix by Bethany C. Morrow and I've never read the original Little Women. I really want to. I can't speak to how it reinterprets the original text, although I have seen the 2019 film adaptation. What I can say is so many times when people reinterpret 
a beloved story. Uh, they're just rehashing some of our favorite things that we have nostalgia for and not really transforming them in meaningful ways. And I thought that every way that this book picked up on little things in the original that could be meaningful for the black experience throughout the Civil War was fantastic. So the novel takes place in a colony of free people in Virginia that is based on real history, which was really cool because now I want to learn more about the actual history it's based on. And this book really touched on the preciousness of family and motherhood and sisterhood within the Civil War and a world with slavery. We hear about Joe's story as a writer writing in a newspaper about the free colony and how she feels pressured to write a certain way because of how enslaved people's writing and dialect is perceived. You hear critique of the colony itself accepting aid and money from white people and the limitations of that especially within the context of the war. And there are lots of really particular examples with the sisters and their talents and hobbies that are so well done that I want to talk about, but I also don't want to spoil completely everything for you. So if you are a fan of Little Women, you definitely need to pick up this book. It is perfect. One of my other favorites that I read this month was How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbue. And I talked slightly about this in my vlog, but it is an environmental story where there is a plant in a village in Africa that is devastating the community and killing children. And it follows the village's attempts to speak with the government and the company and various forms of activism to try to get this company off their land and stop them from harming their community. This book does an amazing job on not only detailing the activism and the role of different characters in the community um, going different routes to try to solve the problem, whether that's through appealing to the people that are causing the harm, to holding protests and committing violent acts, but it also looks at how all of these actions taken by specific characters affect other people within the community. And this book is told through the perspective of many different characters. And I listened to this on audiobook, which was actually really wonderful because all of the different characters were voiced by different actors for once. And so I highly recommend that way of engaging with the book. But I'm so glad I read this. It's such a heartbreaking book, but so beautifully done. The next book is Pet by Akwaiki Amezi and I loved this book and I'm really looking forward to picking up the sequel at some point, Bitter, which has just recently come out. This book takes place in a world that has supposedly surpassed all this structural inequality and also um, personal violence and is deemed a world without monsters. But when a creature emerges out of her mother's painting, Jam quickly discovers that there are still monsters in this society and has to follow clues and figure out what's happening and how she can deal with this problem. This book has wonderful descriptions of family and friendship and community. It is both gentle and a real look at the way abuse occurs and is shaded in a community and I can't wait to pick up Bitter. So the last book I read was Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. As I said after reading Beloved I wanted to engage with some lighter reads so I picked this up. It is a romance but it is one of the most well-written romances I've ever written. The characters felt real and not just like paper cutouts that serve tropes and specific whims and urges that a romance can scratch. It follows Eva Mercy, who is actually a writer of romance books, and Shane Hall, who is a reclusive, uh, best-selling writer. 
and their journey reconnecting and falling in love again. We see the circumstances where they originally met when they were teenagers and were outcasts and were both there for each other through some dark issues in their lives and then they weren't there for each other because of specific circumstances I won't go into because of spoilers. So when they reconnect they have to deal uh, with the weight and truths of these situations but also it is just fun and was so loving um, in how the two characters dealt with problems in the other characters' lives. There is death, there is alcoholism, so definitely look up the triggers for this. But there is also a wonderful representation of uh, chronic pain and invisible disability and how that can impact someone, especially someone in the spotlight like Eva, and also Eva has a teenage child and it's beautiful to see the way Shane fits into a pre-existing family. So for all these reasons it was amazing and you should definitely check it out if you are looking for a romance with a little more depth than normal I guess, but it also still was very sensual and sexy and had all of the fun, you know, falling in love things that you would normally want in a romance. So those were all the books that I read in February. Did you have a recent read that surprised you or that you're really enjoying? I'd love to hear about it. And if you have any thoughts on these books, I would love to discuss below. So yeah, thanks for watching!